Hey, it's time for episode number 208 with my friend Angela Froschel of Hot Mess Consulting. If you've been a part of the Boutique Hub for any amount of time, you probably have come across Angela and her awesome work on websites. So if you've got e-commerce questions, this is your week. Let's talk about your business strategy and the juicy details of what actually works from mainstream fashion to fashion on Main Street and the entire ecosystem behind it. How do we scale your company and do it with the balance and the happiness that we all seek? Let's hear from those insiders, experts, and strategists that actually make it happen. I'm your host, Ashley Alderson from the Boutique Hub, and I can't wait to chat. So I'm trying to remember how I first met Angela. She became a member of the Boutique Hub as a boutique owner with Thong in a Boutique. And she became the girl that so many of us just really enjoyed building a friendship with. She was always so helpful. She would help people who were struggling with Shopify or had design or branding questions and just say, hey, from my experience, you know, this is what's worked for me. And really, it seemed like one thing led to another. And soon she was starting her own business, Hot Mess Consulting, which is such a a fitting name for the life that she wants to lead. And you're going to hear why today. Angela is such a woman with a giving heart. She wears her heart on her sleeve. She is willing to give you the shirt off her back if you need it. And you're going to hear more of her story and really what's led her to live her life that way and to be give, be such a giving person and business owner. But you're also going to hear today some really actionable takeaways that Angela wants you to hear because these are commonly asked questions she gets when it comes to branding and website design. I love working with Angela because not only does she have that experience, again, as a boutique owner, she's been there and done that herself, but now she gets to serve boutique owners, her clients, in a brand new way with her branding and consulting business. So get ready. We're going to talk about the five things that you need to work on for your website and branding stat. And when I say five things, I don't mean just five things. I mean like five things with like five to-do lists of things underneath the five things. I mean, she brings a lot of detail to this podcast episode. So in case your arms are cramped from taking notes because they darn should be if you are hungry in this business, check out. There's also a download that Angela provided for everyone who's a member of the Boutique Hub inside of our training library. I tell you what, she's giving like that. So go check out that download. Take tons of notes in this episode. And I know if you've got questions, reach out to her and ask because she is your go-to gal. So guys, I hope you enjoy this episode. Thank you for listening. I hope that you leave us a rating and review if you love the show and let us know what you think anytime over on Instagram at Boutique Business or my personal Instagram, AJ Alderson, because I would love to hear from you and to hear what you're doing while you listen to the show. So have a great week, you guys. Enjoy this episode. Hey guys, welcome back to the show this week. And I'm so excited about the guest that we have because I know if you're a part of the Boutique Hub, she's no stranger to you. You've probably seen her in our groups offering helpful advice, but also supporting a number of your businesses with Shopify, setup and design, and all kinds of help when it comes to answering your e-commerce questions. So please help me welcome my friend Angela from Hot Mess Consulting and also a boutique owner. So we've got dual knowledge that we're going to cover today, right, Angela? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we have a lot of like key takeaways and technical pieces that we want to cover today, which I really appreciate so that we can keep the podcast as actionable as possible for everyone listening. And I know that's right up your alley, too. But before we get started, you have a really unique perspective, like I mentioned, because you are a service provider in the hub and you work with boutique owners, but you are because you have that extensive knowledge yourself. So can you start by just kind of telling us a little bit of the backstory about how you got started with your boutique in the first place, which then kind of led you to this additional pivot and opportunity? Yeah. So I've really always known that I wanted to run a business from the time that I was like a little girl running like a paid palm reading stand and lemonade stands and just all kinds of stuff. Wait, a paid palm reading stand you read as a kid? Yeah. yeah. I only, I think I only had like one gentleman like actually pay me, but I had like this little slip (laughs) that I give them even that I filled out. Like it was already like a pre-made slip where I was just going to fill out the answers based Uh on looking at his palm or whatever. And no, I did not know at all what I was doing. (laughs) So so what did you tell him? Do you remember? Um, no, (laughs) I wish I did though. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's, 
unique. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I could go on and on. I have a bunch of funny stories of like different businesses that I tried to start when I was little and stuff. But so but somewhere along the line, you know, like I I mean, I knew that that was still what I wanted in the end. But I kind of lost like sight of the possibility of it. Like I kind of lost faith in it a little bit. You know, you get you get to be an adult, you graduated college or whatever your path is, and you just like start getting into a a career and you kind of get stuck there. So I was an admin for like eight years before I finally started my boutique. And it was a really terrible health condition, pretty much cancer. It's a complicated, it's called a desmoid tumor, but it really kicked my butt for about five years. And it was near during the worst of it, like when I was bed bound and that's a whole nother story on its own too. But during the worst of it is when I finally like woke up and was like, oh my gosh, like I can't wait to get better. And I'm scared about how long it's going to take to get better. But I'm actually more scared of getting better just to go back to the life that I had before. That where I wasn't chasing my dreams, where I forgot what I wanted out of life. And so I was kind of able to use that time instead to be like, this needs to mean something. And so, um, and, and, and so that's what I did with the boutique. I actually like 13 years ago, I wanted to start the boutique and it was going to be called thong in it boutique because I was going to specifically sell thongs, the panties and flip flops. Those were two of my favorite things at the time. And, um, I made a website, which I actually kind of had to do like the coding on myself. Cause this was like before, Shopify or before any of these programs just made it really easy. So I was using this thing called Zencart. And again, I had to get into a lot of coding just to make it look even a little bit cute. And anyway, so I did a bunch of stuff, but I just never pressed go and really started the business. So fast forward to dealing with this health issue that was opening my eyes. And I, it was literally like in the middle of the night and I was like, okay, what am I going to do next then in my life? Like if I, if I don't want to get better because I don't want to go back to where I was, what's next? And it was literally in the middle of the night that that the boutique came back to me and I was like, oh my God. And at the time, LuLaRoe and everything like leggings were all the craze. So I was like, well, what if I could start with like leggings or something? So I looked up wholesale leggings and right there at midnight is basically when my boutique started rolling around, like trying to figure out what to do and literally on my phone. So as I was looking for leggings to buy wholesale, you know, everybody was like, oh, you need your wholesale license. You need your wholesale license. So I Googled it right there and I was able to apply in California for my seller's permit for free, all on the phone, like in 10 minutes. And so, and that was it. And from there, I, um, I just took off with it and I never stopped. (laughs) Oh man. I, I remember when you and I I think first connected, you must have just started your boutique or you were fairly new into it. I feel like, and were you still maybe battling the tumor big time at that point? I feel like I remember you telling me about being bed bound during that time and just how that spurred you on, which is remarkable. Like what good can come out of such bleak situations? Yes, yes. And the tumor, so I am basically almost three years or just over three years, something like that, um, tumor free. Mm -hmm. And this was a tumor that has a really high recurrence rate. And so like a lot of my counterparts, like fellow patients that I'm still friends with and stuff are still suffering and they think that they'll be suffering their whole life. And at one point I wasn't sure whether that was going to be the case for me either, but I have this really strong, like, will, you know, and I'm like, always like, Mm -hmm. I am never willing to settle like this is good enough. Like for me, tumor free Mm -hmm. was the only thing that was going to be good enough. So when there was doctors saying like, oh, it's if we can just get it to stop growing any bigger when at the biggest, it was 20 centimeters, and it was in my hip, like, it caused problems Mm -hmm. walking like all kinds of stuff. So they were like, you know, we don't recommend you get it removed, because it'll just come right back. And, And I did get it removed. And it did come back. But but then there was more treatments after that. And anyway, so now it's been like three years. And so, I mean, that's another thing is just like never give up on like what it is you really want. Don't settle for what you have right now. If what you really want is more than that. That's kind of off topic, but your question was, yeah. No, but it's so when I was so crucial. Yeah. 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 So yeah, when I first started, I was bad bound and I was off my off work um, on disability from my regular job. 
And so, you know, I was low on funds because disability doesn't pay you all you normally get. And I was still recovering and learning how to walk again because my first surgery, they took out my gluteus maximus on the left side. So I literally had to like learn how to walk again. And I still have a limp and will always, but whatever. (laughs) And so, yeah, I got started still in bed and just on my computer and Mm -hmm. just kept trucking along. So at what point as you were going along through this, you know, in building the boutique, building the online piece of this, did you realize, oh man, there's other people who have questions around something that comes relatively easy for me as you began to figure yeah, it out really? How did that all transpire? It's so crazy, like how it all happened um, as far as like the boutique and then hot mess. And like, I always knew that I wanted to help other ladies, like really early on in my own business. I was, if people came to me asking for business advice, I was really happy to help them. I mean, I never wanted to like, give them bad information. So I, you know, wouldn't go Mm -hmm. beyond what my knowledge was. But even if you just started your boutique, there's always going to be somebody that's behind you that you can help. That's just a few steps behind or whatever. And so the main thing that I helped in the beginning was like, I would help ladies with like branding. Like I had a friend that sold handmade jewelry and she really didn't have a logo or colors picked out, you know, even just the basic stuff. So I kind of helped her with that and get her business cards designed and Um, This was long before I ever charged for my time or ever even thought that, that, you know, that this could be a business or anything. So Shopify itself, like, and websites in general have always been an interest to me. And when, during, like before Hot Mess, I spent most of my time working on my website. Like that really was the main thing to me. Like we all have our strengths and weaknesses. And that's also something to consider when you're looking for help or when you're looking to grow. Is like, what do you do best and keep doing that? (laughs) And what do you Mm -hmm. maybe not do the best? And can you outsource? Because it's not always, sometimes it's about quality. Sometimes it's just about time. Like time really is money when you have a list of things that you're amazing at. And then this other thing could take so much of your time that it's just not worth doing. It's an absolutely true growth principle. Actually, Sarah says this all the time inside of Retail Bootcamp, do what you do best and hire the rest. Yeah. Because yes, there's no doubt everyone can hustle and figure it out, but that does, it costs you money. And what is your time worth? And are you truly valuing that yes. at the end of the day? Yes, exactly. Exactly. How did you come up with the name Hot Mess when you first decided to yeah. start this new journey? So this um, name actually started out as what I was going to just do. Like I was just going to have a blog. And it was just going to kind of talk about my journey on starting my boutique. And I was going to share it with other people in case they wanted to just needed some inspiration for starting their own business or even not a business, but like whatever it was they were working on, you know, like believing in the impossible and just taking the steps needed to just do the thing, whatever the thing is. (laughs) And so Mm -hmm. that's where the name originally came to me. And that one just came to me so easily because it's just the truth. Like, I've worked with hundreds of hubbies and boutique owners in general now, and we, we're all hot messes. Like if we say otherwise, like, I mean, anybody who comes to me and says that they're not like, I know they're immediately lying. (laughs) (laughs) True. True. So as you work with retailers on a daily basis, so not only you were just, we were talking before we started recording this show that you've got gals helping you with hot mess consulting, sitting in another room right now. And you've got other gals sitting in another room working on the boutique as you continue to build this really cool empire that you've started. I'm sure you hear feedback up to the minute feedback from boutique owners on a daily basis about most commonly asked questions they have with Shopify specifically. Can you talk about what maybe some of those commonly asked questions are and how you could help some of these gals who may be thinking of them right now? Yeah. So um, the most common question that I actually get, even though what I help with specifically is Shopify websites and MailChimp templates and, and your branding. So even though those are the pieces that I help with the most, the question that I still get the most is, will your help bring me more sales? And Hmm. the issue is, it's really the wrong question to be asking. I mean, like, there's different pieces to the puzzle as far as your success and like bringing sales in. And branding is definitely one of them. And marketing is is a whole separate thing. So a lot of times people seem to get those kind of mixed up. 
So like the main thing with Shopify is if you're not looking at your data at all, we kind of can't even have a conversation about this yet. <laughs> but so so the first thing that I usually ask when when I'm asked that question is like, you know, how many average daily visits are you getting to your website? Where are those visitors coming from? And then what is your actual conversion rate? Because it's important to, so like a lot, I'll get a lot of um, potential clients or, or just people asking questions that are like getting a lot of traffic, but it's not converting. Like, what can I do? Well, we look at everything and they're only getting like around 25 visits a day or so say, and really that's not enough to even be looking at, I mean, you still should be looking at your conversion rates, but at 25 a day, that's probably just like really organic traffic coming from the few posts that you do on social media. Those are probably like your friends and family and people that are already following you. So those are like warm visitors for one thing. And it's just not a lot. It's not enough visitors per day to really gather anything super useful from your data. So if you're only getting like 25 visitors a day, well, your first goal really needs to be to get that to 50. Whatever you can do, and and we'll go over this more a little bit later, I think too, but like what can you do to get those visits up? But, you know, so if, if you're less than that, you want to get to 50. Once you're there, your goal should be 100 visits per day. And then just keep going that way. Because I mean, you do want to look at your visits and your conversion rate, but until your visits are high enough, you can't really, like I said, just make useful inferences from the data. So, and then the conversion rate itself, I mean, remember that the average conversion rate is only like about 2% in our industry. So like, where are you according to that? And if you're starting to increase your traffic and this is brand new traffic coming in or it's older traffic, so it's people that don't already know you, your conversion rate is going to be lower too. You know, you might be used to having like a really high conversion rate when nobody's really looking at your website, but that's because the very few people that are looking are your friends and family and they're already ready to buy. Mm -hmm. And so you really just want to work on getting that traffic up. And then the other thing is like, how is your website when the traffic is hitting your site? Like, is it, do you have enough inventory? Do you, uh, well, we'll go over some of this later. But really, that's the main question that I get is like, can your help bring me more sales? And honestly, my answer is no, because there is so much. There are so many other factors in Mm -hmm. the success of your website and increasing your conversion rate and everything like I'm just a, a piece of the puzzle. Man, I love that. I love it. And so I think what we should do next, we were kind of strategizing, man, how could we lump all those pieces into one flowing topic, right? Because you're right. I always, I always use this analogy that being a successful boutique owner is like a four-legged stool, right? Where you have to be great. You've got to have great financials, like financial know-how. You've got to have the right inventory. You have to understand marketing. And then there's like the whole personal mindset piece. So there's so many pieces that go into you as a successful business owner. But I mean, even just you and e-commerce, has all these moving parts. So let's talk about this. Five things to work on for your website and branding ASAP so that you can generate more sales, right? Yes. So tell me about what is number one for you? So one of the first things that I work on with clients um, and some don't have an issue with this at all, but is your menu and navigation. So this is the thing that's hard is that your menu and your collections is something that you often, well, not often, you always set up, you know, right when you very first start your boutique and website. So you don't know on that day what you're going to know like a year later. And I think that a lot of times the issue is just that clients never go back, or boutique owners in general, never go back and kind of reevaluate if their menu and navigation is even still working. So they just keep adding more items to their menu, adding more item, more collections. But really what you want to do is sit down and be strategic about your collections and how they're organized, because you want it to be as easy as possible and as fast as possible for your customers to get on there, find what they're looking for, find your best sellers, which are your bread and butter. So you want to make this all just as easy as possible. So for one thing, if your menu is in, is, has so many links, like you're just your whole main menu that it's in two lines, it's way too long. 
Like it really should all fit into one line. Like that is your Mm -hmm. first goal. So how can you reorganize things so that what's most important is right there as a hot link and otherwise it's in like a drop down. So for shop, for example, I'll have, say that you sell women's and kids clothes, just as an example, you, you would automatically probably already have too many categories to just have them all listed on the main menu. But what you could do is like shop women, shop children. And then each with the drop down and then even the drop downs, you don't want to have like 15 to 20 links. That's going to be too many that some visitors. And when I say visitors, what I'm talking about is cold visitors that are new to you. These are the ones that you want to work hard to convert because the ones that are coming from your from your Facebook group that love you anyway, like they really don't care what your website looks like. And they probably don't even care how easy it is to use. Like they don't care if it takes forever to load. They don't care if it takes them a while to find something because they can even just message you and be like, hey, where is this? So what I'm talking about is trying to make this easy for the brand new person that's really valuable to your business because if you can get them to convert once and even twice, then maybe you can, you know, have another loyal customer there. So when you're organizing, so like say shop women's clothing, again, you don't want a super long list. You want maybe like ideally like five to six underneath that. And then if you need to subcategories from there, you can, but uh, I would only do that if you have a large enough inventory to do so. So like if you have, if you're going to say that you want to do tops and then you want to subcategory short sleeve, long sleeve tunic. Well, that's fine. As long as each category is going to have like mm-hmm. at least 10 to 15 items, at least. Cause you don't want a bunch of categories that are empty and you didn't even realize they were empty or they or even just like have only a few items because you really want it to be as simple as possible for your customer to see like most of what you have and to make it look like you have a full catalog maybe even if you don't yet so just if you really do have a large catalog like especially if you have a brick and mortar like of course subcategorize it totally makes sense But if you don't, then just don't do that yet. You can always do that later when you grow. Start off with just tops, bottoms, dresses, you know, that kind of thing. So really just making sure that everything is organized in a way that makes sense. Your best selling, like if you have a best selling brand, you may want to put them right on your main menu. But again, you also want to consider like a lot of like if you're if you have a brick and mortar store and say this is your first website, it may not matter what's the best selling in your store because your your online website is going to be for a totally different audience or that's what you have to assume anyway like maybe some of your visitors will also shop on your store but again those ladies are already loyal to you they don't care how your website is going to work as much as a new visitor will and like if you sell uh if you sell a really large variety of things in store you may not want to, you may want to leave some things off your website altogether and really focus on just clothing versus mm-hmm. like home decor or that kind of thing. Cause you can always add things back in, but your the audience that you're going to be trying to attract for your website is likely going to be different than the audience that you attract for your store. Mm. Very good tips. Would you, besides the shop category question for you, besides the shop category, on the main navigation, is there any other like calls to action you would include on the top navigation navigation? Yeah. So I always like to make sure that, um, that clients have like obviously an about page and on this about page, like make sure it's not third person. (laughs) People these days want something personal. So why did you start your boutique? What does it mean to you? Like what kind of a difference do you want to make in the world? Like, who are you besides the boutique? All good things to talk about. So an about page and a contact page, um, and those can be in one drop down. Make sure that your shipping and return policies are really easily accessible right there too. And then if there is somewhere else that you really want to point them to, whether that's download my app or join my Facebook group, like that's somewhere else, something else that you can have in your main menu. Perfect. How do you feel about sale categories and where those should be listed in your navigation? Oh, yes. So I definitely have an opinion about this one. And if something else works, I mean, take everything. First of all, take everything I say with a grain of salt and everything everybody says with a grain of salt, because you know your business best. 
But my opinion on sale categories is that they should be nowhere on our boutique sites at all. We should have, you could do sale categories that pop up temporarily. So it could be like every other month that you're like, oh, we have some sale items and you're promoting that, you know, via email and via uh, your Facebook group and wherever else you're posting on social media, but have it be something that's temporary. Like when you have visitors to your site, you don't want them to shop the sale items. You want them to shop your full price items because that's what keeps you in business and profitable. And if you give them a limited time, like you only have 48 hours to buy these sale items, then if they're even thinking about it, they're going to act then rather than know that they can always go back to it. And I just think that Mm -hmm. the sale and clearance categories are kind of, I mean, we're boutiques, like we're not discount stores. So I just think they, they really shouldn't even have like a regular spot. If you really have a lot of stuff that you need to move that way, that's when I think it's better to just get creative and, you know, look at some of the, whether it's de-stashing to other boutique owners or um, there's a couple groups like Gypsy Bargains, I think it's called now, that you can sell directly to consumers, but they're not your consumers. Because that's another thing is like before you try to do a lot of sales with your own girls, like where else can you try to get rid of this stuff? at a, you know, even if it's at a discount, that isn't going to affect your primary customers that you really need to be shopping at the full retail. Mm -hmm. Man, I love that. I didn't know that that was your opinion, but that is super smart. Makes sense. (laughs) I love the temporary idea, especially, you know, when it comes to like seasonal transitions, right? Like after winter, when you're trying to get rid of all your sweaters and everything else, it totally makes sense to have a clearance category, but only during that that time, right? And you can really drive that sense of urgency that that's really smart. Yeah, because there's also like trying to sell it in person, or, you know, even your group is a better place to do like a a purge sale thread now and then than to do it on your website. I love that. I love it. All right. What is your number two piece of advice when it comes to working on your site? So your brand story and voice. So this this is a hard concept for a lot of folks, but I mean, basically I would just sit, if you, if you don't know your brand story or voice already, I would kind of just sit down with it, like in a quiet space where you can kind of close your eyes and really think about like the, the story that you're trying to portray with your brand and the personality. Like, is it very faith-based? Is it mom-based? Is it really, really sassy and bold? Like, what is it? Can you name like five things, like five adjectives about your brand? And then how can you make sure that those come across in everything, in every piece of copy and also all the graphics and imagery? So one place that this matters is in your about page, in your product description. And look, none of us are perfect. Like I have one of my girls does my product descriptions right now. And so they're not always like totally amazing. Like, I mean, you can't get absolutely everything right. But if you can just always be looking to improve these things, that's better than, you know, (laughs) so, um, yeah, but yeah. So your product descriptions, you're about even the graphics on your homepage, like what does the text say on them? Like, is it, you know, just bland, like, or is there a little bit of personality behind that too? Mm -hmm. So, and then also in your social media posts, you want this to be apparent and you know what you could do too like especially this is hard because if you're outsourcing it I mean for example if you're hiring like a VA to do your social media posts well unless that VA is really good at copy those posts could be bland so one thing you could do is when you have time I know we never Mm do but like sit down and create a list like a spreadsheet of like copy ideas just words and short phrases and things like that that really Tell the story that you're trying to tell with your brand. Um, And then you can share that with those people that are working on your items. I love that. Even one place I love to go look at like unique copy and marketing ideas. Um, Number one is MailChimp. You know, if you log in there, like say 404 pages or just how they speak on their website is so unique to them. But then also the men's brand Chubbies. Do you follow Chubbies? Oh, I've seen one of their emails. I don't follow them, but <laughs> it was definitely. Oh funny. my gosh. You of all people would just love them. Their stuff is so clever. Yeah. But I love just what you're saying, how you can take that unique 
voice and micro copy everything and just put it in a doc. That's super smart. And the thing is, it's even places that you don't expect. I mean, okay, so social media posts, product descriptions, about page, the graphics on your homepage. But there are so many mm-hmm. other little nooks and crannies that you can get that, that personality and brand voice into. So like every single email that you send, the names of your categories, the names of your items, although I am partial to using descriptive names for like SEO purposes, search purposes, and just so that your customer knows what they're looking at. But you could try to, you know, you could kind of have them still be fun names that are also descriptive. But it's just the point is like, you know, your business card, the thank you um, package insert that you send them, like all of it, any way that you can infuse that personality, like every last little line. Yes, I love it. All right, what's uh, number three on your list? So this kind of goes along with the last one, but your photos, graphics, and imagery. So again, once you figure out like the story that you're trying to tell, the feel, the vibe that you're trying to go for, and your colors, of course, when you're branding, you really should have specific colors down to the color code um, figured out. So once you have all that going, how are your photos going to help you build that brand rather than just be floating out there like, like Ross photos or something. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, you know, and obviously like a a lot of people have trouble with this photo shoots. Like, you know, they take time and energy to coordinate. Sometimes they take funding that you may not have quite yet, but I, I just really think amazing photos are so important. Like one of the things Mm -hmm. with my business, my boutique is that like from day one, I never even thought of using like stock photos. Like I didn't even think that was, it's not that I didn't think that was an option, but like to me, it was not an option. But one of the things that's really cool about doing your own photos anyway, even in the beginning, like even if like I started with using my own cell phone, even though I'm not a great photo taker and with a few of my friends that were willing to model for just a free pair of leggings, which is like five bucks, right? So start where you are and Mm -hmm. just build on that. And the nice thing about it is it also starts to build a community like around your brand. So my friends were like excited to be involved, you know, and then so they got even more involved with my boutique and a lot of them shopped more with me than they would have otherwise. And then they're excited and they share it with their friends and and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of good reasons to do photo shoots, even besides just good branding. But absolutely the photos that work in your group, like selfies even behind like a dirty mirror like hey those work in your group (laughs) like you're because again the girls in there like love you or they wouldn't be in there following you but on your website you really want to make a different impression and because you're really trying to lure someone in who's brand new and doesn't know you already so I just it's just one of my biggest things like I didn't do this as when I first started making websites for you ladies I didn't stress this as much, but lately I've been really getting in with each client, like, okay, what can we do about these photos? (laughs) Like, what can I do, like, to convince you to do a shoot for this website? Like, because even if, say that, say that regular amazing photo shoots are just not going to work for you. You work, you work full time, you don't have the funds, da, 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 da. Well, can you fit in like two a year? three a year where you're doing like a really amazing photo shoot so that you have photos to keep your homepage fresh and to use for marketing purposes and to have for your social media as something above and beyond the other dirty mirror selfies (laughs) that you have on there. So yeah, yeah, I'm just all about amazing photos, but, and they just help build your brand too. Totally agree, man. And they can't be stolen across the internet, right? Or they can, but it's a lot easier to set yourself apart for sure. How yes, about this? Especially if like you're running ads, if you're running ads off of stock photos, I mean, Hey, like if it's working, cause that's the other thing I said to take what I say with the grain of salt, what anybody says, if something is working for you, don't stop, like keep doing more of it. <laughs> But yeah, but man, like I definitely do not recommend running ads off of stock photos. <laughs> truth, truth. All right. Let's talk about your number four, because I really, oh man, I think not enough people think about this one in terms of like the overall view of their business. Yeah. So the, so basically think about your customer's entire journey. So we've kind of talked about little bits of this already, but 
your customer's journey, and again, let's think that this is a cold customer. So somebody who doesn't already know you, right? Like, first of all, how are you, how are you attracting them? Like your first step is visibility, getting in front of them. So mostly this should be through organic social media posts, whether it's your Facebook page, your group. Pinterest is a great one for that. Um, Instagram and Instagram stories, right? So this is all organic, unpaid. Or if you do want to start to get into paid, it would be like brand awareness Facebook ads, right? Just kind of getting, getting in front of people. Like right now, you're not trying to, you're not trying to get them to jump right into buying because it's just not going to happen like that. They need to see you several times. They need to get comfortable with you. Like, but how are you going to get them to see you at all and just get in front of them? So this is where your brand matters in your, mm -hmm. in, in the posts that you're making everywhere. So again, the personality, the photos, the graphics the cohesiveness of everything. Like if they see you on, actually I had a, a client recently that I'm working with right now. She came to me with like certain brand colors and a certain, I had like a certain idea about what her brand was based on like the survey that she filled out. And then I, when, as I was starting to work on her project, I looked at her Instagram and I'm like, girl, this is so bright and fun and like gorgeous. And this, is nothing like what you were telling me to do for your website. So you want it to all be cohesive, not only because like if you're spending energy attracting people to this, if they get to your website and it's something else altogether, that's just mm -hmm. not helpful. Oh my God. So I feel like I have those stories of coming to people's websites going, whoa, not at all. Like you expect it to be a certain level of class or price points. And I'm sorry to totally interrupt your train of thought, but I think where you're going, so many people today are wondering, how can I charge more when their brand is reflecting a lower price point appeal, right? So yes. you're spot on with how your website really needs to reflect who you're wanting to portray. Yeah. And it's hard because with the social media platforms, Every social media platform has its own rules and culture, basically. So maybe like, so with this client, I almost thought, well, maybe she just thinks like, that's the best way to attract people on Instagram. So that's what she's doing. Or maybe she's outsourcing it and she doesn't even like this. And that's just how it is. And her real brand is what she's been telling me over here. But when I talked to her, it wasn't the case at all. Mm -hmm. And she was willing to go deeper with me on working on this to create something even better that really matches, that's just cohesive all the way around. So it's hard. Like you don't want to, you don't want to like conform to a certain social media platform because you think that that's going to be what's best if that's totally against your brand. So it's, it's finding mm -hmm. that balance of like, what's going to work on these platforms. And, you know, maybe it could be that your platform doesn't have any need to be on Snapchat, for example. Like if none of your potential customers are ever going to be on Snapchat, then, you know, don't waste your time there kind of thing. Yes. Amen. Right there. Yeah. So first is getting visible. Um, and next is like getting them to your website and hopefully to your amazing website. Because remember, if you're send, if you're doing all this work to get people to your site and maybe you're even starting to pay for ads, then your website really should be amazing so that when those cold visitors are visiting, they're not just immediately bouncing and they're intrigued enough to kind of like stick around and, and maybe come back because they're not going to purchase the first time they land on your site. So it's going to take them at least a few times. I was just, someone on the hub was saying the other day that they were tracking an order and it took 22 visits for that customer to finally make a purchase. So is your website good enough for someone to come back to 22 times? <laughs> Man, truth right there. So getting them to, their, to your website and this, so traffic, basically getting that traffic up. That's what I was talking about earlier. Like if your traffic is only at like 25 visits, how can you get it to 50? Then how can you get it to 100? Well, again, so organic social media call to actions, make sure that you're actually posting that link everywhere. Like don't make a post and not post a link. Now, this won't work for everybody. Some of you guys are really into comments sold or keeping it in your Facebook group. And that's another way to go. We're talking about growing your website sales in particular. So those are two totally different. Um, mm -hmm. So if your goal is website sales, then you need to be posting, posting those links everywhere under the sun. And then, you know, moving on to Facebook traffic ads versus just the brand awareness. That's when you kind of 
know that you are on the right track. Your website's good. You've got inventory on your site. And now you're trying to just increase those traffic numbers. So yeah, and with the inventory, it's like, just making sure that like you have a, a large enough variety of items that when someone lands on there, they're you know not looking at like two tops to pick from. Like they really need to see several options. And then also like, are those available in multiple sizes? Or do you have like a ton of items that are only available in small or only in large? Like if a customer has to click around too much and nothing is in their size, they're just going to leave and not want to come back. So yeah, visible and then getting them to your website and then getting them to follow you from there. So on your website, how can you attract them to join your email list? So that's like a pretty pop-up, maybe offering something like right now on mine, I just started offering a free pair of leggings with every purchase. And that's only $5. Like I just stocked up on leggings and that is totally worth a brand new customer to me, you know, like if that helps and just getting them on my email list in general. So how can you get them on your email list? How can you get them to download your app? Um, A lot of my clients now are asking for um, banners and buttons and whatnot on their homepage that will go directly to download the app. So that's always good. How can you get them in your group if that's a big channel for you? Like whatever it is. So getting them to follow you. And then how do you keep your brand like on the top of their mind? Like how do you just kind of keep that visibility up. So that's just like posting consistently on your platforms and making sure those posts are on brand and often. So often to me is definitely at least twice a day, depending on the platform. Instagram should probably be more than twice a day and you should definitely be using stories, which I'll tell you, Instagram is not my jam. So like that, I'll say that, but there's a lot more to it. (laughs) My jam is um, Facebook for sure. Man. So, and then sending out your emails, MailChimp, and again, making sure that's all branded, um, pushing out notifications if you have an app, and then retargeting them when they add an item to cart. So like you can be retargeting them through Facebook Messenger, emails, again, push notifications. And every step in this process, again, how can you make sure that this is branded. So like if you are doing Facebook Messenger retargeting efforts, <laughs> I can't even think straight. Is your are your messages the same sassy fun tone that the rest of your your site and brand is? Because mm-hmm. it really does make a difference. Like just kind of giving like giving that that potential customer an experience rather than just you know, a run of the mill like I don't know, just mm-hmm. bland. Like my one of my taglines is like, are you blanded or branded? <laughs> Ooh, and that's I just love like it. every step of the way. Like, how can you make it yeah. fun for them? It um, makes it memorable for sure. Yeah. And then post purchase. So, like after they purchase, what happens? Like, what are the automatic, you know, Shopify sends out like 17 emails on your behalf um, from order confirmation, um, abandoned cart is one of them too, actually right through Shopify. And then all the shipping confirmations, like even those you can make fun and there's a cool app. So the app that I use on my clients is called orderly emails. So you're definitely welcome to check that out on your own, but, um, it just really allows you to customize the look and feel and copy and everything for all of those emails that go out. And then how is your packaging? So, and this one's tough because I have a lot of clients that are like larger volume and they don't necessarily always do a whole lot with the packaging, but especially when you're first starting out, I mean, make each package count. So the tissue paper, the stickers, like all of that can and should be branded. The thank you package insert, which can either have like a discount to try to lure them back in for their next order or request like a selfie. Um using your hashtag, like how else can you just kind of wrap it all up and try to get them to come back and interact with you again? I love it, man. I think that what you shared was (laughs) everything that you've shared so far, we're going to have to put into a PDF download and put in our training library as a bonus. If you're listening to this episode, because that is pure gold right there. And it is literally from start to finish mapping out the customer journey. That's brilliant, Angela. Yeah. And I actually, like, I wanted to make just that PDF, (laughs) but I'm like between four employees now and I'm just like going crazy, (laughs) but it's still on my list. So maybe by the time this airs, I can. 
we will, <laughs> we will make it happen. We will make it happen between you or us. We will make it happen because that has to be shared. It's so good. So yes. has, has, you're just like recapping this for everybody listening right now. And they're like, oh my gosh, I have a book of notes. Let's just really shortly recap those five key things to work on from a high level point of view. Uh, if you want more sales from your website right now. So the five things to work on are your menu and navigation, your brand story and voice, your photos, graphics, imagery, your customer's entire journey. And as far as the journey, how I broke it down was gaining visibility, getting them to your website, getting them to follow you outside of your website so that you can keep talking to them. Keeping yourself on the top of their mind, so keeping that visibility up, retargeting them when they do finally add an item to cart, and then treating them well or just giving them a fun post-purchase experience. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that again. My goodness. So as you look back at all the clients that you've helped so far in this process, would you say, is there anything that sticks out to you as something that your most successful clients have had in common? Yes. So my most successful clients for sure were ones that really, really took ownership of their business. So they really knew that my help was just a tool, like rather than a magic Mm -hmm. and that the success of their new website and their business in general depends on really no one but them at the end of the day. Like I'm a resource and there are things that I'm good at and things that But at the end of the day, like all the responsibility still falls on you. Like, how are you going to use this amazing Mm -hmm. website and brand that I've helped you build? Like, are you going to continue to infuse that brand into all aspects of what you do? That kind of thing. Oh, man. And so, and so the best ones like that, that, so, and when I say like the best ones, the ones that are most successful, meaning that they really get the most out of their investment with me they really get involved with me too. I mean, I know that we're all busy. So, and I think that like when I first started making websites, like people were coming to me really just needing something thrown up because tech isn't their thing. You know, it was a kind of a bonus that I could make it look pretty. But now like Mm -hmm. my goal really is to slow down with each client and really really work on the bigger picture with you guys. And so if you're just trying to save time, I'm probably not the best person to work with because I'm actually going to make you work a little bit with me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, I am still going to do the tech stuff and the graphic stuff and the creative stuff and put it all together for you, but I need your input. So yeah, the best will, they get involved with me. They ask questions. They're curious. They're open and communicative with me. They aren't worried about offending me and they also aren't offended when I give them feedback or courage uh, or critical, what is constructive criticism? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's good. It's it's like a gym membership, right? Like with anything, you only get out of it what you put into it. So I think that that's spot on in terms of increasing the value that you're being able to give your clients. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's, a, it's really, it's a work of love. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Truly a work of love. Man, we, we could talk all day. I feel the same way about things inside of the boutique hub, right? Because you can come in and have access to all of that and it is a work of love. But if you don't do something with it or take ownership of it, you aren't going to get the results. Yes, ex- so exactly. So very much spot on. All right. Should we have some fun? Can we do a quick lightning round before we wrap up our conversation, which has flown by today? <laughs> yes. Okay. So lightning round, first answers that come to mind as I ask you these questions. Deal? Yes. All right. Favorite book? Um, Way too many to list, but maybe like Big Magic. Ooh, good one. Favorite podcast? Dial Your Mind by Kara Alwell Leva. Oh, I don't know that one. We'll have to put it in the show notes. I'm not familiar with that one yet. Okay. How do you take care of yourself the most? Ugh. The short answer is I don't, unfortunately, but I'm working on it. And that's a goal for this year. (laughs) So I'm trying to get in 30 minutes of bike time, like at at my apartment's Mm -hmm. gym here um, every day. And it's really hard. Like the hardest part is just pulling myself away from the work and going and doing it. But it also gives me a chance. Like I have a lot of really good books that I'm working on and 
So it gives me a chance to kind of zone out and focus on something other than the businesses. Man, you're spot on. And you know, I think that so many of us fall into that same trap, right? We feel like we have to stay busy in hustle mode to accomplish things, but sometimes we can get even more accomplished when we just take that step back and take care of ourselves yeah. first. And it's amazing the the ideas and just the clarity that can come to us through that experience. Yes, definitely. All right, biggest fears, snakes, payroll or internet trolls? Um, I think internet trolls. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one likes mean people, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, like I actually just started running ads for my own boutique. I really was doing that all organically. And, and then we do in-person events that we sell it to. And um, mm-hmm. because like my, my ads are a little bit bolder, like about hearing all sizes and, and whatnot. I think they're, because they're bold and in people's face, I'm actually getting a lot of comments on them, but a lot of them are, are troll-ish, you know, like, Oh, well, you say yeah. you carry all sizes, but you only go up to 3X and da, da, da. And I agree. I agree. But it's still like, do you have nothing better to do today? <laughs> right. Oh, man. I call them couch jockeys. We had a similar, we had a, a post go a little viral a few weeks ago. And same thing, just like your boutique. Actually, I think your boutique may have been featured in this blog post, but it was about how one size does not oh, fit yeah. all. and the need for curvy sizes, right? Extended sizes. And we actually started to get negative comments from like one or two people on, well, there's not enough out there for extra smalls and petites either. I had that too. So (laughs) on mine, not only was somebody like, well, you don't have larger than three X, somebody else that was thin said, well, I I was really offended when I went to your website or no disappointed. And there were no petite models. Cause like right now, both my models are like a size extra large. Uh I'm, I'm working on that. We had a petite and then it we had two and then they're not available anymore anyway. So yeah, I had that too. And I was like, yeah, well, normally it's the other way around. So <laughs> right. Not your customer and that's okay. Right. You stay in your lane and you own who your ideal customer is. Yes. Yes. All right. Boutique or boutique boutique for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. So let's wrap up with this because I know, you know, you alluded to a lot of your personal story at the beginning and just the journey that you've been on, which I think watching your journey from afar has been so cool. I mean, I really commend you for what you've built and the tenacity that you've had in doing so. And I think that you're really leaving something very special for those who are in your path, right? Those who are your clients and and people like me who just get to watch you from afar. <laughs> so I'm curious, as you think about the life that you've led up until this point and the journey you've been on and the business that you're building or businesses, plural, that you're building in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road, and, and you look back at this journey, what is the thing that you want people to remember most about what you created? So there are two pieces to that. The first one, and if you were to ask me this question, maybe even a year ago or two years ago, for sure, it would have been this first piece, which is your wildest dreams are possible. And, you know, because mm-hmm. I won't take too long to get into all of this, but if you don't know me that well, like I also self published a tell-all called Why the Hell Am I Not Wearing My Pants? And that kind of goes into this further if you're ever interested. But basically, like, I you know, I haven't had an easy life. Like, I was, you know, raised by a single teenage mom. My dad is, like, a meth addict, like, in and out of jail. Um, I finally went to see him again, like, a few years ago. It had been, like, 15 years or something like that. And he, um, like, there was, like, literally no way to even connect with him. Like, he was like impossible to talk to and just like a child, basically a child in a man's body. So uh, I I was never given anything. Like I worked really hard to put myself through college and going to college and working full time. And I've been out on my own since I was 19, as far as like fully supporting myself. And so just that if I can, like, if I can make my dreams come true and right now that like my, I'm already living like beyond what my wildest dreams were, you know, at one point. And if I can do that, really anybody can. But the second piece that I want to add to all of that Mm -hmm. now is yes, your wildest dreams are possible, but also you, you can have it all. So once you reach that now success, I mean, you know, you can never just be done, you know, like, because you're always going to be building on that dream or you should be anyway. But my big thing now is proving to myself and to all of you guys that 
we can have it all. We can have the success. We can um, use our dreams to fund our lives and leave our day jobs and all that kind of stuff, but also still have some balance in our life and also still have joy and also still have time to do the things that we always wanted to do. Like a a couple months ago, I booked my Mm -hmm. first trip out of the country. I've been wanting to travel since I was like a little girl and I'm going to be going to Bali in May, like alone. (laughs) And um, I mean, I'm like getting nervous even now, like it's a couple months out and I'm like, oh my God, I have so much work to do before then. But like, honestly, like if we're not living our best life in general, then like, why are we here anyway? You know, like, because we all came here for freedom and Mm -hmm. to have like a better life. So I really think we can reach success. And then once we're there, we can also learn how to slow down and enjoy life again, too. Man. Man, I love that, Angela. I think there is something there literally for everyone to take away, no matter where they're at in their life's journey, right? Because there's so many ups and downs from starting a business to finding what you really want that success to be, to actually, like you are, feeling like you've reached that point. And now what's next, right? Yes. Yes. Man. Well, I just really want to thank you again. Thank you for your time. This is the second time you and I've got to go through this process together. But I'm so glad that we did. And I'm so glad that our paths crossed and that you are the person that you are. And the way that you help our community inside of the hub is just awesome. You are so helpful inside of the groups, always there to lend an ear or a hand or advice. I just really want to thank you for that and what that means to us at the hub, but to our entire community. Yeah, definitely. And I am just so glad that I found you guys and both my boutique and hot mess really would not be here without you. And it's just, it's just amazing. The community, like I never I never really like fit in in school. Like I was definitely never popular, but I feel like I just, I fit in with you guys here. And I just love, like, I cannot wait for summit again Mm -hmm. to see all of you. (laughs) Agreed. Agreed. I can't wait to see you too, man. Thank you so much, Angela. You guys definitely check out the show notes for this episode. We're going to have links so that you can connect with Angela directly, ask her your questions, learn more about her business, but also we're going to try to get that PDF download for you into our training library at the hub as well, because man, there is a lot of meat to take away today. So again, guys, thanks so much for listening. And Angela, thank you a million for your time today. Yes. Thank you, girl. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. We hope that you loved it. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a rating and review down below for a chance to be one of our featured listeners each and every week. For more information on our spirit of community over competition and how to access complete show notes and bonus downloads from our guests, head on over to theboutiquehub.com and join the community. We'll see you next week.